Docker Compose makes it really easy to horizontally scale applications through replicas. In this video, what we're going to create, let me show you right here, is when we run Docker Compose up, we're going to spin up six node server replicas and then an Nginx load balancer, where this Nginx load balancer will send all requests to these node servers. Up here shows the statistics of all our servers. The ones we're interested in are these right here. And I created this simple script right here, which is a test file where I will spam 500 requests to our load balancer. And so when I run this, we'll be able to see this, all of these servers being hit as the load balancer distributes the request. So to demonstrate, I just have to run dot dash test.sh and we're spamming them all. Look at the CPU percentages increasing right here as our Nginx container forwards them. So we're gonna be building all this. This is of course JSON data that's coming back from our node servers. And we're also gonna learn how to dynamically adjust the scaling. So for example, right now we have six of these servers. Let's say we wanna downsize them to three. So we can run Docker Compose scale, our service which is server, and three. And when we run this, three of them are removed and we have three just running. So now Nginx will only forward requests to three of these servers. Now let's say the traffic's picked back up and we wanna go back up to six replicas. We just change back to six. And now we have all our six running again. And when we run our test file, once again, Nginx will distribute all these requests. But so this is what we're gonna build. We're gonna build all this from scratch. But yep, enjoy the video. So we're gonna start coding just from an empty directory like this. And the first thing we're gonna do is let's set up our environment variables. We'll do all this inside of a file called .env. And the variables in here are gonna set the name of our project, the port of our node servers, and also the name of our Nginx container and our Nginx port. And now the first thing we're gonna do is work on our node app. So I'm gonna create a folder called server, and then let's navigate into this folder. And the first thing we're gonna do is just initialize this as an npm project. So npm init es6-y. And then we'll also just install express, which is what we're gonna to use to handle requests. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a source code, source code folder in here, and a file in it called server.js. And this is just gonna be our server, so our express server, where we're just gonna have one route, which is dash API dash users, that will just return this JSON array. And then let's just create a simple start script for this inside our package.json file. We'll create a script called start, and we're just gonna run node dash source server.js. And that's all we're gonna do with our server. So these are the, of course, the node servers that we're gonna spin up lots of replicas of. But now let's create our Nginx reverse proxy, which will forward all the requests. And I'm gonna create a folder in here called conf, and we're gonna have another one called public. So of course, conf will hold our configuration. And so first, let's configure Nginx to be a load balancer. And so I'm gonna create two files. I'm gonna do nginx.conf for our main configuration, and then I'm gonna do upstream.conf, which is gonna configure Nginx as a load balancer. And so our nginx.conf is actually just gonna be the standard that comes by default with, with the Nginx Docker image. So it just has our error logs, our setting our user, all this stuff. I might change the format of the logs a bit. And then the most important line really is in our HTTP context, we have an include, we're gonna include our other configurations. And I actually pasted this in the upstream file. So let me take this out, put this in nginx.conf because in our upstream configuration here, what we're gonna want to do is configure nginx to be a load balancer. And we're gonna do this by creating an upstream cluster of all our node servers. So we can do that by creating a server context. We're gonna listen on the provided port and host. We'll set our root so we can serve up our static content from there. And then we're just for all requests to dash API, which will be this here, dash API dash users, we're gonna forward it to our upstream cluster right here, which will be all of our replica node servers. And if you're curious, all this stuff here, so the dollar sign and curly braces are all environment variables. So they'll all be replaced by environment variables under the hood using Docker. And we'll see more of that when we're using Docker Compose. But we also, as a note, set a weight on our first server to five. And this is because by default, requests are distributed evenly amongst the servers using a round robin balancing method. So Nginx will use a round robin balancing method to distribute any request to dash API among this cluster. Setting a weight of five here will make it so five requests go to server one before server two is hit, at least overall on average. I don't think it necessarily means it'll have to be five before we go here, but essentially this will receive five times more requests than the other ones. And this proxy pass directive right here, which we use to proxy the request, it sets the address and protocol of a proxied server. And of course for us, this is just gonna be our upstream server group. And now inside our public, all I'm gonna do is create an index.html file. It's just gonna be some static content that our Nginx load balancer will serve up. 
And so what it's going to do is it's just going to have a div, which when this loads, it's going to make a fetch request to API-users, which will, of course, hit this location, be proxied to our upstream server, and then it will return API-users, which is this route right here. So it'll return this JSON, and then we're just going to loop through it and print out paragraph tags for each one of the users. And so, of course, it's important that we're making the request to our to Nginx and not the API servers directly. And also, we won't be able to do that anyway because we won't expose any ports, but we'll see that later on. But now let's start with our Docker files. And the first thing I'm going to do is in our reverse proxy, I'm just going to create a Docker file. And in it, we're just going to use Nginx Alpine as the base image. And then we're going to copy over our public directory into this location, which is, let me zoom in one more, where we set our root. So right here, root. And because we're copying our public directory into there, our index.html file will be served up. And then we're going to copy our Nginx configuration into the main Nginx configuration and also copy our configuration file into this templates directory. And this templates directory is important because this is where Nginx by default will perform environment variable substitution. So it does all this under the hood with env subst, which is a command line tool. And it'll go through and replace all the this format, so the dollar sign of code brace with our environment variables, which of course will come from our env file. And this will be loaded into the project with docker compose, which we'll see in a second. But that's all we need for our nginx docker file. Now let's do our node one. So I'm just gonna call this not docker ilf, but docker file. And this is gonna be pretty standard as well. What we're just gonna do is we're gonna set create a working directory called server, where we're gonna copy our package.json, package lock into, and then we're gonna run npm install, but omit all the development dependencies because we just we're essentially making it for production and then copying over everything else and running npm start. And so that's all there is for this. Our npm start script will of course just start or is it in here? It just starts our server or our express server. So now we've got both those set up. So we just need to create our top level docker compose.yaml file. And in here, of course, we're gonna use docker compose to spin up our entire application. And first, so I'm just gonna copy in this whole configuration I have, and I'll just go over what all of it is doing. So first, at the very top, we have our project name, which will come from this project name variable, environment variable, and close out these files. So that comes there. Then we're gonna define our services. And the first one is going to be our server, which will be our node server, which will get the Docker file from this server directory. It'll load in environment variables. And then we're going to use deploy to create six replicas. So it'll spin up six of these containers. We also set pull policy to build, just so it builds from here. It doesn't try to pull anything from a remote uh, reg repository or registry. Then we have our reverse proxy service, which of course is Nginx. We're going to build it. We set our container name, load in environment variables, build from the Docker file and we set our ports. So we map our machine port to the container port. And it also depends on our server because we want our upstream cluster to be up before we spin up Nginx or else in our configuration file. So inside upstream.conf, it won't find any of these servers. And then notice also how we specify the ports here, but we don't inside our server. And this is because we don't want our API servers to be able to be contacted directly. Any contact that's going towards them should be through our reverse proxy so it can handle the distribution of requests. We don't want people just being able to contact our servers directly. But that's really all it takes to, to write this. I'm actually going to create also a test file at the top level called test.sh. And what this is going to do is send 500 curl requests to our load balancer. And then we can see how it distributes the request among the application servers. So first I have to make this executable. So I'm going to do chmod. Just going to do add executable for test.sh and now we can see our test.sh is executable sweet so now we just have to spin this up so i'm going to do docker compose up and i'm actually going to run this in the background so i'm going to tag on dash d so now we can see it's building everything and there we are we're spinning up all our servers so all our containers were created and then we started our nginx one so it looks good to go and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create another one of these for testing purposes and i'm going to move it up here and inside of this I'm going to run docker stats and what this will do is it will print out all our running containers ignore these ones down here as these are for um, just some local blog website I have running the ones we're interested in are these right here and we should watch these CPU fluctuations as I run that test file which will essentially spam nginx which will distribute the request so if we run test.sh run this see all the CPU percentage spiking we also can see how server 1 has a higher percentage because we added that weight to it. But so it sent all those requests that quickly. 
Let's run it again. They're all getting flooded. So we can see how Nginx is distributing the request to them. And of course, this is the JSON data that's returned. But that's all it takes to spin up something like this. And now also let me show you how if we run, let me cancel out of Docker stats right here. If we run Docker PS, or sorry, not Docker PS, we can now dynamically scale how many servers we have. So actually I do want to run Docker PS. Uh, let me zoom out a bit more so we can see this better. And we have, here are our six containers. Let's say we wanted to scale this down, but we could just do Docker Compose Scale and then set our service, which is server. And if we set that equal to three, see how three, one, two, three are running, but four, five, and six are removed. So now if we run Docker PS again, notice how we just have these three in the cluster now. But now let's say traffic is picking back up and we want to scale back up again. We can just say, let's just type in six and it started all six. And when we run Docker PS, here are all our servers running. That's all it takes to make something like this. If you like this kind of content, check out my courses linked in the description. Also my Chrome extension called Witzepter. Besides that, if you have any comments, leave them in the, or if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll try to get back to you. Thanks for liking and subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next one. Take it easy.